Hello, I'm Karen Logue and I'm the Managing Director at West Tee Hill Community Theatre and I have the privilege of being the Artistic Director for It's a Wonderful Life. The Frank Capra story is a radio play written by Philip Grecian. We're going to open the show on December 7th for two long weekends, Fridays and Saturdays and Sunday matinees. Friday and Saturday shows are at 8 o'clock. Tickets in advance, you can call 319-0205. Basically what we're doing with the wonderful story of It's a Wonderful Life is showing and taking you back to 1940s, to a radio stage, perhaps somewhere in New York City, where everything will be done just as if we were broadcasting live on radio. And one of the really neat things that's going to happen with this show is that WHIR and WRNZ are going to broadcast a performance live and will be airing it on the radio station throughout the holiday season. We're really excited about that. You're going to see lots of people playing lots of different roles where the voice is really the thing in this particular play. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and something really different for our theater and quite an entertainment for our community. Four, three, two, one. W -T -T. Broadcasting from the Danville Studios, of WTHT and through the sponsorship of Farmers National <coughs> Bank. And Jeff Cooper, your handyman, the West T. Hill Theater radio players present Frank Capra's classic, It's a Wonderful Life, adapted for radio by Philip Grecian. Our story in a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor. Commercial, 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 commercial. And now, it's a wonderful life. Where are the prayers? I owe everything to George Bailey. Help him, Lord. Please, God, help my son George. He never thinks about himself, sir. That's why he's in trouble now. George is a good guy. Give him a break, God. I love him, Lord. Watch over him for me. Dear God, please bring Daddy back. Thank you. Your friends do too. Hello, Joseph. Trouble? The name George Bailey keeps turning up. Yes, I know. We should probably send someone down. Whose turn is it? Clarence, oh, the clock Clarence. maker. He still doesn't have his wings, does he? He doesn't have much going for him at all, sir. But he has faith, Joseph. A strong and simple faith. Seems to me that's exactly what George Bailey needs right now. Send for Clarence. Oh. <laughs> You want her to see me, sir? Yes, Clarence. Someone needs our help. His name is George Bailey, and he's about to throw away God's greatest gift. His life? His life. Oh, dear. It will be your mission, Clarence, to change his mind. I have a mission. And, sir, if I should accomplish my mission, might I perhaps have my wings? It's been nearly 200 years now, and, well, people are <coughs> beginning to talk. Clarence, you do a good job, and you'll have your wings. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, no time to lose, Joseph. Uh, sir. I'm turning this over to you. Brief Clarence on his mission. Yes, sir. I have my eye on some spares I must tend to. Good luck, Clarence. Thank you, sir. Now then, Clarence, let's go back in time a bit for some background on George Bailey. That's him, George Bailey, 12 years old. They're sliding in the snow, down the hill. And across the icy pond. Riding on snow shovels. It's a contest to see who can slide the farthest. And stepping up to the starting gate, my kid brother, Harry Bailey. Uh, uh, I'm not scared, George. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Oh, 
Oh, he's going much farther and, and faster than the others. Out there where the ice is thin. The ice is breaking. George! He's falling in! He's, he's gone under! I'm coming, Harry! George! George is jumping in! Where is he? There he is! He's got Harry! Make a chain! Lock flat on the ice! Make a chain! They're pulling him out! George saved his brother's life that day, but he caught a bad cold, and the infection cost him the hearing in his left ear. It was weeks before he could return to his after-school job at Gower's Drugstore.